At the time of this recording, PHP 8.5 is in the release candidate cycle, so we can finally discuss what's new in the next version of PHP. In this video, we'll discuss exactly the timeline for the release and some of the new features and changes that we can expect to see. Hello, developers, and welcome to the PHP Architect YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel, we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published. So at the time of this recording, PHP 8.5 is scheduled to be released on November 20th, 2025, after it's gone through its alpha, beta, and release candidate phases. Now, it's always possible that the date may change, as we'd rather have them release working software than something with a bug in it. Um, this did, in fact, happen with the 8.2 release, when a critical bug was found just before the release, so it did get pushed back a little bit. Because it's just a point release and not a full version release, it's not expected to be a painful upgrade, but you should plan accordingly as it isn't a given. And as always, I have two kind of disclaimers before we go in any further. This video was made using the beta release three of the official Docker image, um, but functionality may change between now and the actual release. I also cannot stress enough not to install this in production yet. Sometime after the release candidates, I'll start including it in my automated tests so I can see if anything breaks, but I'll wait until at least the first patch, which is probably going to be 8.5.1, before we start installing it in any production environment. That being said, if you are interested in trying it now, there are Docker images available and instructions for compiling it directly from the source code. So as I said, I'm going to start talking about some of the features that are included in this release. This is just my personal selection of them um, that I think are personally going to make my life a little bit better and others. But you, of course, may feel differently. And if you do, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. And we'll talk more about that after this word from our sponsors. Now, I don't need to tell you that production monitoring can be complicated. There are tons of tools and techniques, but you just want to know that your app is up and your users are happy. When your customers encounter a problem, you need clear, actionable intelligence, not walls of charts and reams of logs. That's why they built Honey Badger, the monitoring tool you've always wanted, a tool that's there when you need it and gets out of your way when you don't. With Honey Badger, you'll know when critical errors occur and which customers are affected. Respond instantly when your systems go down, improve the health of your systems over time, and fix problems before your customers can even find them. Honey Badger is the application health monitoring tool built for you, the developer who cares about a quality product and happy customers. Start monitoring today at honeybadger.io. It's free to get started, and the setup takes less than five minutes. Once again, that's honeybadger.io. So in PHP code, it's common to have a block of several functions that operate on the output of the previous function, something like what's on the screen. PHP 8.5 is going to introduce a new operator called the pipe operator that will allow chaining multiple callables. It does so by passing the return value of the left callable to the right callable, so they're connected like together as if they were a pipe. The thing I find most interesting about this feature comes out of one of the lines from the RFC, and it says that the current implementation works entirely at the compiler level and effectively transforms what we have in the pipe operator into what we had above. And the result is the pipe operator itself has virtually no runtime overhead. Now, there are some limitations, like we can only use callables that accept one parameter, and we can't use callables that pass by references. That being said, to me, this is one of those features that's slowly going to take over sections of my code base to make them just a little bit easier to read, and hopefully Rector will be able to find these and swap them out automatically. Now, there's a class of bug I like to call stepping on rake bugs. And a stepping on a rake bug is when you know better but you manage to make a boneheaded mistake over and over and over again. For example, the code on the screen is being used to calculate the tax for a purchase, but we forgot to store the result. It's especially annoying because that function is making an expensive call to an external service because it's just wasting CPU cycles and we're forgetting to store the information, and it's probably a bug that we just don't realize we have. PHP 8.5 is adding the no discard attribute, which will allow us to flag that we don't want to discard the result. And if we accidentally forget to store it into a variable, PHP will raise an, a warning. Hopefully then our static code analysis tools or code review will catch the fact that we didn't do anything with the tax variable, but it is a huge step forward from preventing us from forgetting to use that return value. I'm actually curious to see how this will work in practice, if people will be scattering these everywhere, or if it gets used sparingly. I'm hoping for the former rather than the later. As a fan of value objects, I really like to mark my class and properties as read-only when possible in order to reduce bugs. The hard part is that if you want to change just one property of an object, you need to make sure you copy over all the properties, like the set for first function on the screen. In this case, there are only two properties, so it's not too much work, but adding additional properties requires us to maintain additional steps, which is always error-prone and annoying. 
It sure would be nice if we could just clone the object and update the field that we wanted to. PHP 8.5 alters the clone logic so we can do just that by making it a function call with a second parameter with what we want to override. Again, this is one of those features that I'm expecting to become part of my regular usage as it'll future-proof some of my more complex value objects. Now, whenever I prepare for these videos, I always go through the list of new features and read each one of them to decide if it's important enough to read, include or not. Um, and I'm always shocked when I find one that doesn't exist but has been added. PHP 8.5 is adding two functions to retrieve the first and last values of an array. They are array first and array last respectively, and they work more or less like you would expect them to. They also work with associative arrays to return the first and last values. And if you have an empty array, they will both return null. So one of the more annoying things that can and does happen is that settings get changed in production environments without the supporting documentation being updated as well. So when you move an application from one server to another, you always just have to copy over the whole php.ini file and just pray that you're not missing some new setting somewhere. PHP 8.5 adds the INI diff command line flag that will display any of the settings in our INI file that are different from the default settings. This is an example of my run on my computer. As someone who co-manages some server, having this in our toolkit is going to make server migrations much, much easier and less error prone. Before PHP 8.5, errors do not provide a backtrace, which can make it a challenge to determine exactly what's wrong with the code that's being called. For example, let's look at this modified example from the RFC. When I run this in PHP 8.4, we're going to get the following less than helpful error that tells us that we've reached the maximum execution time in some random line. Now, maximum execution time errors are always fun because the point at which the script dies can be non-deterministic, so you're always fighting to figure out what's causing the problem exactly. However, when we run the same code in PHP 8.5, we'll get a stack trace. This is another one of those changes that seems like no big deal, but it's going to save a ton of time debugging problems for us in the future. So as usual, there are too many features for me to go over in depth in one of my videos, but there are some that I also want to mention kind of in a lightning round situation. There's a new PHP build date constant that will tell us when the build of PHP we're using was built. We can now add the deprecated attribute to traits, and we can add the override attribute to properties. Finally, the opcast extension is no longer going to be optional and is going to be statically compiled into PHP. This is going to be a huge win as we'll always have it available. And as usual, there are some deprecations that might get removed in PHP 9. You can check out the full list in the RFC. I'm not excited about this batch because they're not features that I use often, but I'm sure lots of people are going to be annoyed that they can't use the backticks to, to run console commands anymore. As a brief recap, PHP 8.5 is set for release on November 3rd, 2025. Major changes that I like include the pipe operator, the no discard attribute, and the new version of clone. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Are there topics that you'd like to see us cover or did we miss some features that you think should have been included in this video? Let us know in the comments section below. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and remind you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading.